I am good, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Hey, where are you joining us from? Sir, I am joining from my home in SCS Nagar Mohali. Mohali. When you are asked this question, then what we mean is everybody is joining from home only. But what is meant is which place? So Mohali is the is the answer. Thank you. Anyways, so tell us more about yourself, about your education, about your family, about your goal in life, and also what do you feel is the most important achievement in your career so far? And what do you wish to achieve in this subsequent phase? Just cover these four five points. Tell me. Sir, so regarding my education, I did my bachelor's in electrical engineering from IIT Roopar. After that, I did postgraduate diploma in management from IIM Rohtak in 2016. Sir, regarding. Uh, regarding my goal in I don't like the way you are describing. Regarding, I didn't ask you these questions. I asked, gave you a suggestion. Describe yourself. It is your choice. Don't say regarding. Sure. I just want you to describe yourself. Yes, sir. Sure. Yes. Uh, so, so after that, I joined Wipro as a consultant, and I worked there for three years. Uh, in my family, sir, I have uh, my father, my mother, and my sister, and there are a lot of qualities I have learned from my father, uh, like integrity and honesty and working hard. And he was the basic motivation as he himself was working in government services. So he had been the motivation for me to join the public services. And that's the reason I have appeared in the, the civil well, services. Where was he sir, working? Sir? Your father. Sir, he. Yes, sir. Where, where did he work? Sir, my father was working as subdivisional clerk in uh, Punjab State Electricity Board. Okay. All right. And uh, what do you feel is the biggest achievement of your career and your life so far? The biggest achievement. Sir, I will say the civil services, reaching to the civil services interview, that is the biggest achievement uh, because I have been nurturing this goal from a long time and it is the dream of my family and me to like become a public servant and spend time in the service of the nation. Right, but uh, this is uh, still a work in progress. Hopefully you will succeed and you will make it. If you don't, then it is gone waste until you are able to do it again. So that can hardly be called as an achievement. It is not something which is achieved and tangible in your hand. It's a work in progress. You have achieved up to a distance, reached up to a distance, you are going to achieve. Once you have cracked the examination, that would be the achievement. That's yes. just an achievement. What else? Sir, the other thing that I consider to be an achievement is that uh, I have no, so, so I have tried to now make balance in life. I have learned to make balance in life. Earlier, for example, in my class, I was too much focused on studies only. But later on, I started focusing on so, other things as well, like fitness, pursuing the hobbies, learning new things along with the professional work and studies. So I will say this is one of the biggest achievements is to maintain balance in life and consider life from the various perspectives. Good. Very nice. So that means you have uh, had several good learnings in the life. Tell me one or two examples which you feel could demonstrate that you achieved the balance in life. So, sir, uh, there are two incidents I remember like the most. So, one of these incidents, uh, so, sir, during my class 12th, uh, I used to be a very studious person who used to focus only on books. And I was uh, like disregarding the other aspects of life. But in I am Ruthak, when I was in the man, uh, pursuing the management 
degree at that time i had pursued sir, certain leadership roles uh, informally as well so there never used to be a gym in our new iim so sir i had basically built a small gym in the iim rotak with the help of funding from all the people who were interested and this was a initiative i had taken on my own with the help of the other people so so i think this is a balance because i had managed education along with the other qualities which are needed to be there in a person okay fine what else good so the and another another thing is earlier in my life uh, sir i used to be a workaholic person i used to spend 13 14 hours just a minute you used to be what say it again it's a workaholic person workaholic okay so i gained lot of weight in the first year of my graduation in iit as i was only like work studying so later on sir during the second and third year i developed a fitness and strength training as an hobby so i further explored these areas and balanced them with my education and the professional work and today i have a like a very fit body and my body parameters like blood pressure heart rate they are quite good so no, that's good i'm glad but uh, number 1 and number 2 are the same thing there is no difference or is there any difference uh, sir in the first case i will say i focused on the other qualities like leadership um, understanding more about people and the second is more about personal me all right uh, what is it that you want to achieve out of life sir in life uh, i have a desire to serve the people of our country our nation and uh, particularly have that recognition for serving the people for doing something better so there have been like many civil servants who have done so much better things like pm armstrong so so he out of his own efforts he has built a road in the northeast like without any funding so so these are the things that i want to do in my life to like serve the people and make our nation and people proud sir all right over over to you mr neeraj kumar uh thank you sir yes sir so narinder uh, your optional subject was punjabi literature yes sir am i right yes sir so, can you tell us what is the history of punjabi literature so punjabi literature it's a it's a very old language so it started from the nath jogis like charpat nath and charangi nath so it was basically a language that can be considered to be like hindi only but later on it evolved so after that sir sufi saints like uh, baba farid baba bulle shah they came in and they refined it further and used it for the poetry after that sir uh guru ji and the other gurus had certain the progression of this language and then got some change during uh, mughal era too when the effect of persian came in and then english also had some impact at new forms of literature came in and so today this is the final stage uh, where punjabi has reached in now the new change sir, that is coming in is the dialects they are getting uh, vanished okay uh what are the scripts of punjabi literature so there are basically two main scripts that are used for punjabi literature uh, one of them is shah mukhi which is actually used in the western punjab or the pa- uh, punjab which is in pakistan it's more similar to diction in case of india more similar punjab to in india uh, excuse me i didn't the persian persian it is more persian okay they uh, written from left to right uh, okay. in sir india in india we uh, which was evolved by uh, gurus sikh gurus okay uh, what are the stories uh, of uh, guru nanak sahab called uh, sir they are known as janam sakhis janam sakhis okay uh can you tell me who wrote heer ranja sir he was the classical poet of punjabi literature uh, varis shah and soni mahiwal 
uh, sir, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it is Pilu, but not exactly sure, sir. What did you say? Sorry. Pilu. 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 No, that's not right. It is Fazal Shah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Have you heard of uh, Kartar Singh Dugal? Yes, sir. I have heard uh, about him. He was a novelist in Punjabi literature. What are some of the famous novels? Sir, I'm not able to recall the his novels at present, sir. Okay. Uh, what are the some of the contemporary? Who are the contemporary Punjabi poets of uh, Punjabi literature? So some of the contemporary poets are Amrita Pritam, Mohan Singh, and so then we had the Pash Jagtar, and then we have the sir, new mystic poets as well, uh, like Jaswan Singh Kaval. What are the uh, what is the poetry of uh, Amrita Pritam ji related to largely? Uh, sir, earlier in her career, she was more like focused on the romantic poetry, but later on, sir, progressive poetry were also seen in her poetry. A lot has been written about her liaison with a certain Urdu poet. Do you know who the Urdu poet was? Uh, sir, one of was them Sahir Ludhyanavi. And the other? Uh, sir, I'm not able to recall the name of the poet, uh, but she used to appreciate his poetry a lot. Uh, but I'm not able to sir, recall his exact name. Okay. Uh, now coming more to uh, more mundane affairs for times, what is your uh, opinion? Why did we fail to deal with the second wave of COVID? Sir, it happened because of multiple reasons. One of the reasons was that uh, sir, people, they had started, uh, like after the first lockdown, they had started avoiding the social distancing and they were eager to like come out and uh, be the part of the religious processions. So that actually led to the rapid spread of uh, coronavirus. The second reason was, sir, uh, uh, that... Uh, our health infrastructure, we had sir, not taken enough precautions for creating enough temporary health uh, spaces to treat the COVID patients and uh, ensuring the oxygen supply. We could have anticipated it well. So the third reason is that uh, the biologically, the virus also mutated in dangerous forms uh, such as alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. And delta actually proved to be the dangerous one, which actually led to the second wave. So in the light of our experiences in the second wave, what do you think we should do to deal with the third wave? First, it's a vaccination for all, particularly for the vulnerable groups first, like disabled people. Uh, secondly, the creation of the temporary health infrastructure facilities, like converting the old buildings which are not being used. Uh, for more capacity of beds. Thirdly, sir, cre uh, creation of plants like pressure adsorbents for production of oxygen in case the oxygen supply is needed. Uh, fourthly, sir, we should at the same time keep on researching about the uh, new strains that are going on through the genomics research as well, so as to take the uh, so as to take the efforts at the right time in case new strains are detected. Okay, but. Uh... How do you assess? Have we done all the taken the all these steps uh, adequately? How so? We could have taken, sir. Have we taken? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, we took steps. Uh, they was right to certain extent as government had posted the lockdowns earlier, anticipating the V-shaped recovery. Uh, but, sir, there were some lacuna which could have been improved and which can act as our learnings in the third wave. So, for example, having uh, the oxygen supply, uh, which was which, which shortage was placed uh, during the second wave, having a more number of beds uh, through the transit 
transitionary and the temporary yes this oh. have okay rajiv ji thank you sir uh and uh, good afternoon good afternoon sir uh tell me what are your views on the government's efforts to double the farmers income i mean can is it achievable yes sir i think uh, the government's vision of achieving farmers income is definitely achievable but it will take some time how do we At go least, about uh, doing it sir um, firstly we have to take up the issue of the declining agricultural fertility due to the fragmentation of land holding and uh, rapid use of the fertilizers so we have to use the organic fertilizers and the pesticides to reduce that secondly sir we have to diversify the farmers income through the other programs like li uh, livestock development uh, because livestock these can provide additional income to farmers in addition to that sir we should uh, raise the awareness among farmers from moving uh, from the rice and wheat to other crops as well like which can fetch better price in the markets in addition to that sir government has taken right steps uh, like in joining all the farm uh, farm markets together through enam and such kind of measures to like integrate the markets where farmers can get better prices for their produce this can de definitely go in that direction uh, on the uh, so what are, and what are your views on the farmers agitation sir uh, farmers have some, have some of their concerns and the government bills they are also actually in the right direction uh, in protecting the farmers uh, so i think both the parties they should actually come together and resolve their differences uh, so that uh, the farm laws they can actually be implemented and the income of farmers uh, it could be raised but it is a fact that the government has brought about the legislation through the correct measures they followed all the steps that are required to get about a they've gone through parliament they've got the assent of the president everything has been done so now should it be agitated in the manner that it is being done for instance the government on the directions of the court of course has put the law implementation of the laws on hold it is suspended so should yes. we, should we not give it an opportunity to be to get rolled out and then see if there are any shortcomings we can talk about it but why are the farmers not understanding this uh, issue of deliberating so this is farmers are actually not understanding and this is happening of certain reasons uh, one of them is that farmers they have the apprehension that apmcs they will get abolished which is actually not the case so uh, farmers they want the sir the legal backing for it and sir second reason is due to the fake news which is actually circulating on social media uh, many farmers uh, they have got misguided guided about the laws too which are actually good and also is it getting politicized uh sir there are different political parties which are also actually expressing their views and uh, is constitutionally right because sir everyone has the right to freedom of expression in the country okay but what are your views on the punjab assembly passing uh, a resolution that the laws should not be implemented in their state this is is that cooperative is that what federal federative co cooperative uh, cooperation is all about federal cooperation it cannot be done in the manner that they are uh, you know agitating that the, the laws will not be implemented in their state they passed a uh, law sir, in it. my yes sir in my opinion uh, this should not have been done and a more cooperation should have been there by the state with the center because the uh, subjects which come under the center and if any law has been passed by the center states should respect it uh, because uh, we have to as you said and for a cooperative freedom in a country for the development and progress is it a, is it a list uh, on the concurrent list or on the, in the central list which one sir the, uh, the three laws that have been enacted sir uh, agriculture as such comes under the state list but sir the intra movement inter movement of the goods in the markets that actually comes under the center uh, another question to you on the iits the iit proliferation the number of iits that are coming up now uh, teaching of non 
engineering subjects it is being felt that it will lead to dilution of the excellence in engineering is that so uh, sir i do not feel so be, to to be the case because sir uh, interdisciplinary focus is the need of the r if the engineers they will learn the other subjects they will be able to better like apply their engineering knowledge in the other domains as well which will lead to higher productivity yeah on hydro see what what are the level we have achieved on hydro the electricity production uh sir at present around 12% of uh, the installed capacity in our country it is being achieved from the hydro power plants what are the impediments why are we not able to reach the Section there. So, uh, sir, we have still not been able to fully tap the capacity of the hydro power plants because of many reasons. One of them is uh, the huge cost that is actually required to build a hydro power plant. So, building a full reservoir and the generating station. Apart from that, sir, many times we have to sir, consider the local concerns as well, the culture of the local people who will be displaced. Uh, in addition, sir, I also feel that many of these hydro power plants. Uh, they are actually sir located in the very remote remote areas where transmission infrastructure is not good. So even if the power is generated, it has to be transmitted over long distances. And due to transmission losses, uh, the what exactly we get out of that power, it's sir very less amount. But in almost all the areas that we've done hydroelectric uh, generation, there've been I mean the concerns of the locals have been set to rest. They've all been uh, accommodated. There, I don't think there's anywhere in India that we have uh, a, a agitation going on against such uh, hydroelectric generation. So why don't they see this? I mean, why, why can't our people see this? Why is the agitation against uh, the local plants that are coming up? Why is the agitation going on some areas? Especially at the inception stage, later on, of course, it all subsides. But it, it leads to, you know, delay in the implementation of the projects. Definitely, sir. That's a... Uh, that definitely like creates hurdles in plan uh, in the sir, implementation of the project. I will say, sir, forming a joint committee of the officials and the people addressing their concerns at the earliest and then implement the projects. That could be a way ahead. Very good suggestion. Tell me, uh, on the uh, hydro, do, do we need large uh, hydro projects or smaller ones, which are better for our needs? Sir, in my opinion, smaller hydro project power plants are better because firstly, uh, cost required is less. Secondly, these can be decentralized, used to address the power needs of the local communities. Thirdly, sir, in case of the small power, uh, small hydro projects, uh, sir, the dangers of the water overflowing due to earthquake or the breakage in case of the wall, these are also sir, reduced. If a big yeah sorry sorry please please thank you so sir if a big dram like bhakra breaks up or some due to some uh, mis error human error so the losses will be too high whole Pakistan would be gone and Punjab and Haryana will be washed off but we have if we have the smaller hydro projects I believe uh, these disasters they can be avoided to a large extent yes okay what are the important areas in public private partnership that you can think of where we've already gone into large-scale private public-private partnership. So one of the areas I feel is, sir, at present our country is trying to move towards introducing artificial intelligence and machine learning in various sectors. So uh, there are many private players who have better expertise in this area. The government can coordinate with them and try to implement more such projects, as in case of sir, smart cities the triple P projects that we are taking. And to which other areas can we take the artificial intelligence to use? Sir, in case of administration, we can use it for better the analysis of documents through natural, learn, uh, process, natural uh, language processing. So in case the police can use it for so surveillance through face recognition. Uh, in case of agriculture, so automatic detection of pests, it can be done with the help of the artificial intelligence and accordingly the amount can be applied. Uh, so in case of the uh, energy plants, uh, particularly the uh, wind generation plants, the direction, it can be anticipated 
in earlier with the help of artificial intelligence and machine learning and it can be adjusted earlier which can increase their efficiency okay thank you my last question to you uh, on net neutrality who regulates net neutrality sir it is the tri telecom regulatory authority of india very good thank you sir yes ma sir aapko take over karna hoga i think the chairman is not uh... ah no chairman sir nahi wo sir nahi hai acha acha ha narinder uh some general points sir please we thought you are not there sir <laughs> I was still on mute and the uh, video was off. Okay. I was hearing all the conversation which you have had, very relevant. I didn't want to go much further on some of these things. Just wanted to ask you, since you mentioned about net neutrality, what do you mean by net neutrality? You know the meaning of net neutrality. The net neutrality. Uh, refers to the situation where the internet service providers they are offering the same bandwidth and speed to the uh, various people who are actually using the internet for their content. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it is if there is no net neutrality, what does that mean? What it would be? Uh, sir, it will have two implications. one of the implications is it will be against uh, the right to freedom of speech and expression because internet it's one of the common mediums for the same just just a minute all that i am asking is describe a situation which you would say is not conforming to net neutrality describe thank you sir sorry i yeah so suppose a uh, internet service provider so forms a card with of the other which actually uses this uh, the services and it is actually so through the internet service provider it starts offering more bandwidth and more speed to this person so now the people who will be accessing the services they will be able to access only this service because the speed is higher and the bandwidth is more so the other people they will actually out of the competition okay can you compare this with any situation like on roads can you give an example how would it be comparable to a situation on highway uh, so can i take some time to think if you yes. allow sure. in case it is uh i think uh, these are the public goods that are to be used and sir if encroachments are there uh, that's the sir i can think no, no, of uh, sir i mean if you are saying that the highways should be available to everyone it you cannot say that the so and so can go on a higher speed so and so has to go on a lower speed and so on and so forth and there has to be discrimination depending on who pays what and Thank you, sir. Thank you. You got it. Yes, sir. Neera ji, आप कुछ पूछ रहे थे आप बताइए बात. नहीं सर, अब please sir finish then I'll start sir. नहीं. So one thing which I wanted to suggest that I don't know whether it is an optical illusion or something. When you are sitting on this thing, you are you don't sit, seem to be sitting straight. You seem to be sitting on slightly. You must sit straight. with your uh, spine erect and in yes, a sir. manner in a manner that it looks professional and absolutely alert yes sir uh, not yes, sir. Uh, i mean in a relaxed manner yes sir. sitting in a relaxed manner not with your knees wide open this is not uh, yes, you should be sitting I mean, yes sir definitely posture is not good at all the yes sir definitely relaxed state don't open your knees and uh, and thighs this is not good okay then yes, uh, definitely don't have unnecessary smile smile should be good it should not be too broad it should be just yes. a, a courteous and respectful smile okay yes sir sure oh. sir 
you are in uh, you are a candidate before the interview board you are not sitting in a lounge you are so but yes sir uh, all right now which newspaper do you read sir i read hindu uh tell me any two most important or interesting news which you might have read today or yesterday sir one of the news is regarding the the going out of the us forces out of the afghanistan and the change in dynamics it has brought in in the region uh, sir just a minute when was this news uh, that us forces are pulling out of afghanistan sir they had started early in the year only old news i asked you the news of uh, last two days uh so sir recently uh Amer usa it has sir, formed a quad in case of central asia any, and sir it has yes any what else sir the second interesting news that has come out is uh, that china uh, sir it was actually building one project in case of pakistan and recently Uh, due to our attack in on the bus that was actually carrying the chinese engineers it had fallen in the river due to that so it's interesting sir because it indicate pakistan dynamics these are actually having effects worldwide sir when did the parliament session start sir monsoon session sir has begun uh, sir not sure about the exact date but come on going to you are appearing for an ias interview you don't know that the monsoon session has started today yes sir thank you sir so what is the most important news and what is happening in the parliament you should be knowing at that time if somebody were sir, to ask. yes sir the opposition uh, sir it is going to bring in some of the issues uh, before the government which uh, the, like which are the most important bills which are going to be presented before the parliament so one of the bills is regarding the rationalization of the tribunals uh, so that it's related to sir rationalization of tribunals another is sir the trafficking bill uh, that is also being sir uh, this is these are uh, sir, other bills i am not aware of sir the most important bill if it comes would relate to electricity which would be transformative thank you sir anyway over to you neeraj ji <clears throat> and narinder uh, despite the chairman sir asking you to improve your posture you are still sitting with your legs apart you know yes sir. so i think that is your natural this may be a bad habit that you have so what you need to do is to draw the chair closer to the table okay at least uh, how your legs are placed will not be visible but uh, uh, just take care if you sit like this during the interview despite uh, your uh, good performance you will lose a number of marks okay the yes, second sir. thing right. the, the second thing i noticed was that if someone something was uh, being said to you and you did not understand you your the way you asked the interviewer to repeat was not very polite sure sir. so you have what you have to say is excuse me sir sorry sir i didn't get you but supposing i said uh, narinder pal so you say narinder that is not the right way of asking okay yes definitely. so just be very careful because one such mistake and you will create a bad impression on uh, the board so otherwise uh, your uh, knowledge base was fine uh, especially on punjabi literature because that was your subject so obviously you knew much more than i do so that was good uh, by and large your articulation your understanding etc is good but the overall impression uh, we get 
as you are of today is that you are very casual when chairman sir asked you about the news in the last two days you are talking about us pulling out of afghanistan this is very old news the us has begun to pull out uh, several weeks back right yes sir definitely this is not a topical news this is not a news that appeared yesterday or today so when somebody this is a question which is often asked of candidates during interviews what is the most important news of today or of yesterday so you should be very uh, precise that this is yes. the news even if you are talking about the pull out from uh, uh there's a specific event like what happened at spin boldak or any one of these uh, sites you should know you later mentioned uh, the bombing in which uh, several chinese engineers lost their lives so that is more topical but yet it is not two days old it is older than that so you should yes, be sir, more, yeah more specific Uh, Narendra Pal, sorry to come back again. What I wanted to suggest to you: When is your interview going to be held? Sir, it is on August twenty-three. August twenty-three. So you still have about a month plus, right? So yes, sir. During this time, you have a few sessions yourself. Sit in front of the mirror. Yes, sir. Practice a few mock sessions yourself. record that in a sort of smartphone video or something and see how you look you should be sitting straight yes sir your spine erect with your legs closed this is not right at all i must tell you your, your march will be reduced to at least 50% this is a fatal fatal postural mistake you are making sit yes, sir sit with your legs closed with a polite smile not broad polite expression of smile on your face answer straight to the point remember you are yes, you have a very pleasant personality make the full use of it sure sir appear before the interview board as somebody who is disciplined who is respectful to the interview board and who is answering their question this is a personality test it is not a knowledge test they want to know your presence of mind your personality your demeanor and all that right you yes, can sir. do much better and that's the whole objective of these mock interviews sure sir i will take these things into sir account so, definitely improve your posture improve your person, uh, uh, positioning and look straight into the eyes with politeness and courtesy and try to sure. be this end to the point make sure. uh, on yourself in the mirror and you can then take a couple of more mock interviews if you want come back to us again if you want sure so thank you i will do that okay. Thank yes, you, sir. Uh, Rajiv. Do you have something to say? Yes, sir. Uh, Nandapal, see, yes, uh, I found everything uh, to be more or less. I mean, I'll just uh, tell you about the questions that I put to you. Two minor observations. I asked you on the uh, on the hydroelectric generation, the hydroelectric generation. On that, you opened areas where you were not very comfortable. See, we started off on the hydroelectric generation mode. and on the projects and then when I, you unnecessarily opened up that area of rehabilitation uh, where you were not too comfortable and then we got all mixed up as to is there any agitation going on and then you also agreed that there are none so ultimately they all get resolved so that is an a rehabilitation is a separate chapter all by itself a very complex uh, issue so let us avoid areas where you i mean it was not called for so just try to be very focused on the question that is that is coming to you number 2 public private partnership on that i asked you the areas i was careful in wording my uh, question areas 
so uh, instead of going on artificial intelligence to a uh, considerable detail you should just bullet your answer so that i so that the uh, questioner knows the interviewer knows that whatever question is coming to you you are not giving a uh, you know an answer that already is there in your mind you are in fact uh, thinking over you are contemplating as to what should be the manner in which i should respond as sir said it is a it is a uh, judgment of your personality so each and every word that comes from the examiner should come to you and you first rotate it in your mind see as to what the examiner wants from you what are the words that he has used in the question number 2 number 3 i'm not too sure whether organic fertilizers are is the correct term i, I think it is manure but kindly i would suggest you go through it again i thought it was sure. manure okay, and not because fertilizers are not organic yes sir that is my, right. so they are they are no, manures sir. in fact they are manures otherwise you are all right uh, as chairman sir has made very uh, uh, i mean some observations that you must keep in mind because it also came from neeraj sir the same observation so please take it seriously and uh, be conscious of it okay all the best in the part all the best to yes. to uh, yes, tell you the truth and make the atmosphere a little lighter uh, when uh, we were in the ias academy i joined the ias in 1968 in the in masuri during the training uh, we used to be taught horse riding and in the horse riding there was a very tough instructor called naval singh now when you are riding a horse you have to press the tummy of the horse with your knees you know you have yes. the posture is extremely important because the horse knows how is the rider and he obeys the command of the rider through the pressure on the on the tummy with the knees and then of course the reins so some probationers used to sit like this khul ke baithe jaise aap baithe na aur ek ke bilkul tapta ke khol ke wo dur se chillata tha saab ghoda pe baitha hai sofa pe nahi baitha hai bina ke chad jayega chhati ke upar ye understand <laughs> is extremely important okay yes sir all right all the best take care thank you, thank you sir hopefully you will be fine thank you sir all thank the best nandan all the best thank you sir.